I've decided that I'm going to take out this mount, the whole thing where the little spy camera was because I don't think that was doing any good at all. Uh, I'm also going to remove the big camera I had over my head as uh, I was always getting a lot of glare because it's so so close to the uh, to the Lexan uh, that I'd get a lot of glare and reflection off of that and I'm gonna go with that camera out there I think that shows pretty much everything I'm doing and it gives me a view pretty close to the same as what I'm seeing inside the cockpit although I did like that overhead camera that was alright uh, the camera outside has the ability to be turned on and off remotely and I think that'd be a help and that'll save me a lot of editing and trying to patch in different cameras and everything else and I'll try to keep going with my uh, my separate sound system my recorder I got that working again I don't know why it started working but uh, it did start working I probably forgot how to work it I was asked about the fuel system in here and uh, I thought at first I'll tell you about the football tanks which is what came with the thing I think most Chinooks have those uh, right here is a fuel valve it's a diverter valve you can move the handle this way or this way and that determines which one of these tubes is taking fuel from the football tank you can have a right football tank or left football tank that way back and forth and in the back is where the fuel is drawn out of the valve and into this electric fuel pump it's just an ultralight type pump kind of a vibrating type thing and it it doesn't pump a whole lot of fuel but it pumps it plenty faster than what the engine burns it uh, when I actuate that fuel pump I can turn the valve up here to make it suck from whichever tank I want it's going to suck fuel out of there and draw it and what turns the pump on is this switch right here that's the switch that turns on the fuel pump when the fuel pump comes on it's going to turn on a red light here on my panel that reminds me hey I'm transferring fuel and I usually don't transfer fuel until I'm sure that I can put the whole five gallons in there also I don't transfer fuel if I'm in a dangerous spot or something I want to have a place to land when I when I do that just in case something should go wrong but I've never had any problem with it so this one diverts the fuel sucks the fuel from one tank or the other and this valve back here is just the master fuel valve and that works on the big tanks that are in the wing and they work in common through T fitting here now you'll notice these blue hoses I'm getting rid of this this clear stuff it's okay for sucking transfer and fuel but uh, I don't I don't think it's as dependable it needs replaced pretty often and I'm trying to get away from that now then the fuel tanks are up here with a sight gauge on them I don't know if you can see the sight gauge here but I'll move this up here maybe I don't know how close this camera is but there's a sight gauge and you can probably see if I rock it you can see the fuel sloshing in that uh, sight gauge in there maybe I hope but the fuel tanks is they're they're teed together and act as just one big tank these little extensions I put on there I think Chinook on their plastic tanks they give you some plastic pipe fittings or something that do the same thing as this uh, the difference was that their filler cap I think had a vent in the top up here and I found if I washed the airplane or if it ever got wet water could go through the vent hole so my venting system on these large tanks uh, this pipe in the side of here right here says like a stand pipe on the tank this goes here now you'd think it comes out here this is my fuel tank vent but this vent vents the tank on the other wing they cross the vents so that if the plane was off camber sitting on a hillside or something like that and the fuel won't all run to one side and run out through the vent hole see that's the idea of that 
and uh, hopefully by having the vent down here below the gas tank also if the plane was upside down the fuel would not come out the vent it would stay in there at least if the caps on there tight the caps are uh, Ah, they fit lawn mowers and stuff. I wanted something common so I could get a fuel cap anywhere. So any lawn and garden shop can can sell you these caps. And uh, so I, I just put a tower in there for that. But the original one had like plastic fittings and there was nothing wrong with that. Now, this vent, you'll notice it has like a cone point on it. The vent hole is actually behind it here uh, is where there's a little tiny vent hole. And the reason I did that is to make sure that I don't get pressure in the fuel tank. I made this with the idea that pressure would be a good thing in there, but then I found out it was not a good thing. And sometimes it would force fuel from one tank into the other tank over there. And eh, I, didn't, I didn't care for that. It could overflow, and then you'd see uh, gasoline coming out the vent or something. So by putting this, I call it a go faster on there because I go faster with them little pointy things. But uh, I just put that on there with Loctite over time. The, the fuel vent itself was, is just a piece of uh, automotive brake line that I jammed this uh, piece of hose on. But like I say, this hose here goes to the tank on the other side and vice versa. <clears throat> but that's just something I had in there for safety, you know. So if it flipped upside down or was parked off camber or something. Uh, that explains the big tank on the top and I can add some drawings of how those tanks were made. They were basically a copy of the uh, original plastic tank that they sent. For in the wing, but I didn't find that tank serviceable. It, it leaked and it, I just couldn't get any success out of that at all. So I sent those tanks back and ASAP gave me my money back on them. I told them I didn't think those were fit for service and they they didn't give me any static about it. Now, the football tanks, which go on these jury struts, which I don't have mounted on there right now, I have a quick disconnect here for quickly attaching the line to them where they're going to draw fuel out of these football tanks. And I needed the diverter valve because I couldn't see how you could get them to necessarily draw even. And so I only pull from one tank or the other at a time. Now people think, well, if one tank's full, the other th tank's empty, you're going to fly crooked or something. And I can't really see any difference in it myself. I Maybe somebody could tell it's pulling a little bit one way or the other, but I can't. That five gallons isn't enough to affect it. All right, now these are the fuel tanks, the football fuel tanks that they fasten on the jury struts just with hose clamps. There's nothing fancy about how they clamp on there. And I fasten them on just the way ASAP's instructions were. Changes I made to what they gave me was here where you put the suction line on, there's a tube that goes down inside here and sucks fuel off the bottom of the tank here. Uh, it had a foot valve on it. There was a filter and a foot valve, like a screen and a foot valve, a ball check valve, probably so fuel didn't run back down in this tank and take you forever to get the engine started. I just got rid of that foot valve altogether because they have a tendency to stick, and if they stick, you will flip to that tank and all of a sudden it won't draw any fuel at all from there. And I had a forced landing one time, not in my plane, but somebody else's that had it hooked up that way. And uh, you flip to the other tank, and it, it simply wouldn't draw any fuel. Uh, <clears throat> for the filler neck, I got a hose clamp here, you'll see. Uh, I got rid of their plastic pipe fitting in there. And the reason for that is this urethane that the... Or, polyurethane that this fuel tank's made out of. It's all welded up out of flat pieces. I don't know if you can see or not, but this, these are welded seams here. And uh, it would swell with alcohol. And like I say, I use regular gas, just car 87 octane regular gas with alcohol in it. And over time, this swole up and these threads got loose. And in fact, I, I lost one of these caps over the Great Dismal Swamp when I was flying down to Kitty Hawk and I 
I decided, well, I got to come up with something. I could have went to the hardware store, got another one, but the fact was that it, the threads were loose. This thing just wouldn't get tight in here. So <clears throat> I have put a threaded pipe fitting that threaded in there all right, and I put a hose clamp around it now to keep those threads tight so they don't expand. I also think that maybe I put a little Loctite or something on there too, I believe. So the clamp keeps these threads tight. Now this is the cap. Now you'll notice here is my vent hole because you need a way to have air get in if you're going to pump the fuel out. This vent hole is drilled at an angle uphill like so that water doesn't tend to want to go up in there. It's going to want to run out. And that's the vent for there. And it's just a pipe fitting. I eh, probably got these over at Lowe's or something. But they serve quite well as a filler cap just to carry extra fuel. So what I'm really doing is in-flight refueling. While I'm flying, if the main tank gets low enough, I figure I'm down five gallons, I can suck it out of one of these football tanks, whichever I select, turn on the electric pump, and it refills the main tank. And it does that. Uh, you can do it from the top, and I think that's the, probably the best way to do it. If I had an ultralight, I'd have to do it that way because the engine can't have access to that fuel <clears throat> and just refill it from the top. But on mine, I actually pump the fuel in from the bottom uh, of the main tank when I'm transferring fuel. And the reason for that is that if there was any blockage, say, in, a, in the outlet from the main tanks, or something like that, the fuel coming in there tends to flush that out of the way. If there's hunks of grass in there or something like that, hopefully there's nothing in there. But, uh, but that's something I can do. <clears throat> and also, I can leave the uh, fuel pump run and I would be able to have a secondary source. If these have fuel in them, it's a completely separate fuel system that would pump fuel to the engine with that electric pump on. If, if I should need to do that. Uh, the reason I didn't like the, the way ASAP had these tanks to run, and, and I like running from the big main tank in the center, is because I figure I doubled my chances of running out of fuel if I only, if, if I got to worry about only using five gallons and then switching tanks. Uh, I didn't like that idea. And I really couldn't see any way that you could plumb them together and have them absolutely draw evenly the fuel down there, although there is a hydraulic device that does that. It has a little gear in it, and that, that could be used to, uh, to make them draw evenly. But uh, <clears throat> I didn't like it because I'm too scatterbrained, and I'd probably run the thing out of gas if, if I had two separate tanks on there. So that's how it works. When it's transferring fuel, there's a red light on. I also have one on the panel in the back seat. Uh, maybe somebody want to see my, I got the rear seat panel down here too, somebody might want to see that. There's an overheat light here on this panel and that tells me the engine's too hot. But <clears throat> on the front panel I have a fuel transfer light that tells me that fuel, the electric fuel pump is on and it's trying to transfer fuel. If the fuel valve isn't put in, if the selector isn't put to the right tanker, you just have it in the middle, it won't pump anything. That's, that's off. So nothing happens. So I hope that's enough of an explanation. I